order to give you the overview of what is pattern so firstly i'm going to teach you with an example then we are going to do some practice problems right then in the end i'll be giving you some assessment problems that you can look at and solve on your own right so let us start okay so as a introductory part so let us assume that you start reciting aloud the numbers such as 1 3 5 7 and then suddenly you pause and then i ask you to continue so what you are going to continue with the which next number so the pattern that you are having is let's say i give you the pattern i start reciting from the numbers number 1 3 5 and 7 and i ask you to guess the very next number which you are going to write after the number 7 so which number you are going to write so here you can see that you are going to notice a pattern which is a pattern of odd numbers 1 3 5 7 7 so you will directly say okay that after 7 now i am going to write the next number which is 9 right then 11 then 13 and so on right so this is how your brain picked up the behavior that you understood that how the pattern is going right what you did how you understood the pattern you actually linked all the available numbers that you have in the pattern and then you build up the formula in your mind right and then your brain prompted that wait it's a list of odd numbers starting from the number 1 so if from number 1 the next number odd number that you have is 3 then after 3 the next will be 5 after 5 next will be 7 then after 7 next number is going to be 9 right and as a result you are able to realize the future pattern means you are going to predict the pattern right moving forward the main question which is asked by number of students how do i learn to draw pattern what logic should i use so that i can solve more problems on patterns pattern seems to be very complex to me i am not able to understand that how i can write the solution for the particular pattern that i am getting in my exam or maybe in the competitive contest right so there are only three keys to learn how you can draw a pattern key number 1 in order to code for a pattern you need to develop that mindset that you can solve any problem that is given to you right any problem related to the pattern problem so if your mindset is positive right and you know that you can work with continuity without giving it a break without thinking that you can fail right you will definitely succeed okay so problem may change in the different types of patterns but the approach you are going to use as you just start learning about the patterns will be same for almost all types of pattern based problems right the next second key is to practice with patience obviously in order to become a master at any subject you need to have a lot of practice so if you are solving only one or two problems a day right and you solved it for a week or maybe for two weeks and then in the end in the end you are saying i am not able to solve the pattern based problems it means you are not giving enough time right then the third key is to know the what genre types of patterns you can have and how you can solve each of these patterns so there are three types of patterns the first you have is the star pattern then we have the number related patterns then we have character patterns so let us start practicing each one of these so firstly we are going to see the star pattern problems okay 
So the very first problem you can see in the slide is you have to print a scare based star pattern. So what's a scare? A scare is a shape in which you have number of rows and number of columns as equal. So what, how you're going to approach the pattern problem is you are going to just correlate every pattern, a kind of an array, okay? Which array? A 2D array, a kind of a matrix. So if I convert the scale star pattern into a matrix based pattern, so you will see that the number of columns, right? Which are these one, two, three, four, five. So the number of columns will be equal to the number of rows, right? So in this example, what is the value for the rows and columns? It's going to be five. So N is five. So in this case, the scare pattern will be five by five. So let us start that how you're going to solve it. So very basic strategy that you are going to apply is, as I told you earlier, that each pattern can be solved by converting that pattern into a 2D array or a matrix problem, right? So after converting into a matrix problem, you're going to number each column and the row, and you are going to provide it the index value. You already know that the index value of every row and column starts from the by default number zero. Although you can start in from number one also, it's completely up to you, but by default, it starts from zero. So over here, this is your row one. So for row one, my index is zero, right? Similarly, for the column, these represent the columns. So my first column is zero, second column, index is one, third column index is two, fourth column index is three, and fifth column index is four, right? Now, now let us see how you are going to solve it. Now, according to this problem, you are supposed to fill all the values of the 2D array as star, right? Okay, so, Firstly, in matrix, it's a property that first rows are initialized. Then after initializing the row, in each row, the column values will be initialized one by one, right? So let us initialize row zero, which is your very first row. So how you're going to initialize the first row? You're going to make use of a loop. Which loop? For loop, right? When we use for loop, for loop is used when we already know the number of iterations. So in this case, in first row, how many stars do I need to fill up? I need to fill up five stars. So can I write for i equals to zero, i less than columns, which is five, i plus plus. So in case of scare, your number of rows and number of columns will be remain same, will remain same, right? So here columns value is five, so when i is zero, zero less than five, print star. So star gets printed. i becomes one, one less than five, true, print star, star gets printed. Then i becomes two, i is two, two less than five, print star. Then i becomes three, three less than five, print star. Then i becomes four, four less than five, print star. So now we have finished completing our row one, which is at index zero. Now, after initializing row zero, I need to initialize the same value that we have filled up in row zero in rest of the rows also. Means I have to repeat the same process that I just did for my very first row. And I need to repeat it for rest of the upcoming four rows, right? Are you getting my point? Okay, so if I want to repeat the same task a number of times, what we do, we make use of loops. 
Now, in this case, if you want to repeat the same for the other, where this process, in order to do this process, you have already used loop. It means how you are going to do it? You are going to use nested loop. It means you are going to nest this procedure in some another outer loop. And that outer loop will again run how many times? Five times. So first time you are going to repeat this procedure in the inner loop. Then second time you are going to repeat this procedure again for the second row, then for the third row, then fourth row, and then for the fifth row. Until your condition satisfies. Right? So this is going to be your method. So this is going to be the outer loop. So I wrote for j equals to zero, j less than rows, j plus plus. Earlier, I took the index value, the loop variable for my inner loop as i. So that's why I'm taking the loop variable for my outer loop as j. Don't get confused. You can take any name for the loop variable. Here i and j are just acting as a loop variable. So you can name them either A, B, C, X, Y, Z, any name you can give, it's completely up to you. Not necessary to always give I and J, right? Okay, so initially J is zero, J less than rows, true. So when this condition is true, right? When it becomes true, now control will enter the inner loop. Now J is zero, zero less than five, true. Now I become zero. So your column will be initialized. Zero less than five, true, print star. Then again, print star for I S one, then for two, then for three, and then for four. So in this way, we have filled up your row zero, right? When your column value will become five. So five less than five, false, right? Five less than five, false. So in this case, condition false. When this condition becomes false, control will go to the outer loop again and it will increment the value of J. Earlier value of J was zero. Now J will become one. And again, same procedure will be repeated. J less than five, true. Again, enter the inner loop and print star five times. Right? Are you getting the point? Okay. So similarly, you are going to fill up your row three, which is at the index number two. Then you are going to fill up your row four, which is at index number three. Same pattern. Then when your number of columns will be completely filled, your column condition will become false. Then again, control will go to the outer loop. J will be incremented, J will become four. And then your last row will be filled up with the stars. Okay, so this is how you're going to solve this problem, right? Okay, I hope this concept is clear to everybody. Now, moving on to the execution. So now let's run our code. So firstly, we are going to include our header file, which is stdio.h. Then after including the header file, you are going to write the main function int main. Then inside the main function, I'm going to include the two loop variables i and j, right? Then after this, I'm going to use the first loop, which is the outer loop. And this outer loop will run for the rows. Then for each row, I'm going to fill up the columns. So the second loop, J will be for the number of columns. And in each column, what I want to print is, I want to print the value star, right? Now, after filling up my first row, I want to print the next line. So for that, we are going to write printf backslash n. Okay, so let's run our code and check its execution. But before that, Let's write return zero statement. Now run. So when you run the code, 
you get this as your output. Right. I hope this concept is now clear to everyone. So let me repeat, give you a little bit of explanation of this once again. So this is your header file, right? This is what this is a header, which is standard input output. And we have used this header file in order to use the functions printf. I haven't used any scanner function, but I need to use a printf function. Then there is the main function, which is the entry point for your program execution. So from here, your program execution will start. Then we have declared the two variables, i and j, where i and j are loop variables. Then after this, we are using nested loop, where the first loop is for the rows, right? And this is your outer loop. Then after initializing the row, I'm going to fill up the columns for each row. So for that, the second row that we have is for the number of columns. And this loop, we call it as inner loop. Okay. Then for each column, what value do I need to print? I need to print the value as star. If instead of star, if you write dollar sign, so your output will be something like this, dollar, 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 dollar. Then again in the next line, dollar, 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 and so on. So whatever value you're going to print, that will be printed. But over here, after printing your first row, I want to print rest of the stars in the next row, right? So that's why here, after completing your initialization of row one, right? I need to move on to the next line. So that's why after inner loop, you're going to insert the statement, which is to add new line character, right? Backslash N is for adding new line character. And this backslash N is your special escape sequence character. It comes under the which category? Escape sequence character. Right, just like you have backslash T for the tab space, right? Backslash R for the return carriage. Similarly, we have backslash N for the new line correct. Okay, I hope this concept is clear. There is no doubt till this point. So now let's move on to the next part. So the next pattern that we have is right triangle star pattern. Okay, what is the next pattern? It's right triangle star pattern. Right triangle means this is the right triangle. Okay, so as I told you earlier, what you have to do is you have to convert your pattern problem into the matrix problem. So on the other side here, I have created the matrix for the same pattern, right? Now let's see how you are going to solve it. Now, can you figure out any pattern in this matrix? So this is your row one, right? This is which row? This is your row one. So in row one, how many stars do we have? Count the number of stars. So in row one, I'm having only one star. So the value is one. Then move on to the second row, row two. Now in second row, how many stars do you have? One, two. So there are two stars. Similarly, in row three, we are having three stars. In row four, we are having four stars. And in row five, we are having five stars. So are you able to figure out any pattern for this problem? Yes. Pause this video and think about the formula or what logic you are going to apply over here. So here, the values you are going to print inside the inner loop. So pattern is going to be outer loop for the row, then inner loop for the values. This is going to be the inner loop, right? So value for the inner loop, right? This is for the inner loop. Value for inner loop is going to be 
repeat it for how many values for the value equivalent to your number of row if your row number is 1 you are going to run it for one time okay so i'm going to run it according to the number of row if row number is 2 i'm going to run it two times if row number is 3 i'm going to run it for three times so what condition i have to use it will be i less than equals to j if your i is starting from 1 so let's try to solve it so this is firstly i'm going to write my loop statement for my row initialization right first we are going to write the outer loop for the row so for i equals to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus okay so it will run for how many times 0 1 2 3 4 when i will be 0 1 2 3 4 it means it will run for five times okay then in a loop for j equal to j0 j less than i now here i have written j less than i not equal to 1 why because i am starting i and j from 0 if you i you write over here j less than equal to i what it will become it will become 0 1 2 3 4 comma 5 so 5 will also be included so if you are including 5 also how many times you are going to run it will be running six times so i don't want to run it six times i want to run it for five times right so if you starting your value from zero it will be less than i and then i'm going to print star then after printing my every row i want to print next row in the new line so for that after the outer loop we are printing the new line correctly i hope the concept is clear so now let's run the code so here we have the same problem right same solution that i used for the previous problem right just in place of where we wrote j less than 5 i am going to replace that j less than 5 with j less than i see so here we have j less than 5 so we are simply going to replace this j less than 5 with j less than i right everything will be same and now run so when you run the code here we get the output right and even if you change the value for i as i less than 8 now it will run for number of rows as 8 i hope this problem is also clear to all of you so let me give the final summary for this problem again so here this is your for the number of rows which is the outer loop right so firstly i'm going to initialize my row 1 so this is my row 1 so i is 0 0 less than 8 true so when if the condition is true the control will enter the inner loop and this inner loop is going to initialize the number of columns right so after initial coming to the row 1 now we are with column 1 so j is equal to 0 i is 0 right j less than 0 j plus plus so it will print star okay now we are going to increment then j will be incremented j will become 1 so 1 less than 0 condition false so it will come out from them right okay now moving on to the next problem now next problem that you can see is hollow right triangle star pattern hollow means that you are going to fill up only the boundaries of the pattern whatever values are th were there inside the inside values will be 
vanished. There will be no values inside it. Only boundaries will be there. That is what hollow right triangle is. Okay, you can have a hollow square. You can have hollow right triangle. But again, approach for these problems will be same. So let's solve this problem. So firstly, we are going to convert this problem into the matrix problem. Now, can you figure out any pattern for this problem? Just pause this video and try to link the values with the row number and the column number. Then after filling the values, you can resume your video again. Okay, well, you might have figured out the pattern. So what pattern you figured out over here? So in this case, can you see that I'm having stars when your column is first column? This is the first column. So for the first column, I'm having stars. Then for the nth row, for my last row also, my all columns are filled with stars. Right. Plus, when my row number and column number is same, then again, those values are filled with stars. So here for this star, row and column value is 0. For this star, row and column value is 1. For this star, row and column value is 2. For the next star, row and column value is 3. And again, for the next star, row and column value is 4. Got it? Extremely easy. So now let us write the logic. So what logic you are going to apply is, I'm going to tell this logic for the inner loop. So outer loop will remain same, right? Inner loop condition will be also remaining same, will also remain same. And in the inner loop, the logic will be, if J is equal to equal to one, where J is your column value. So here, I'm assuming that I'm starting the value of i and j with 1, not 0. Okay. So that's why I have written j equal to equal to 1. So here j is equal to equal to 1 or i is equal to equal to n, right? Or i is equal to equal to j. If any of these condition, one condition is fulfilled, then we are going to print star. Else we are going to print empty space, right? So let's run our code. So firstly, we are going to declare our variables n for the number of rows, i and j as a loop variables, then I'm going to ask user to enter the number of rows. That for how many rows I want to print my pattern, right? Then we are going to use the scanf statement to input the number of rows at the address value of the number n. Then I'm going to start my outer loop starting from i equal to one till i less than equal to n i plus plus. Then for the each loop value, I'm going to fill up the number of columns. So for j equals to one, j less than equal to i, j plus plus. And in each column, now I'm going to take the decision that if my column value is equal to equal to one, or my row is equal to equal to column, or my row number is equal to equal to me, my nth number, then I'm going to print star, right? Else, if the condition is false, I'm going to print white space. Right, so this is going to be our solution. Plus to end our row, I need to add the new line character. Now let's run. So enter the number of rows, five, and here we get our hollow space. Let's try it for another input. Let's say I put 10, and this is my output. I hope this concept is now clear. Now, moving further to the another pattern, which is your number pattern, right? So 
Till now we have done your star patterns. Now we are going to solve the number patterns. Okay. So the very first problem in the number pattern is right triangle number pattern. And in this, I'm going to fill up the values. In the first row, the value will be one. In the second row, value will be two, two. In the third row, value will be three, three. Then four, 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 four. Then five, 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 and five. So doesn't this problem resembles the problem which we just did recently using the stars, which was your right triangle star pattern. Exactly. You got me right. Right. So here, instead of printing star, what I need to do? Do I need to print other symbol or I need to print a number? Yes, I need to print a number. Right. So in row one, the number one, row two, the number two. It means you're not going to start your in loop variables i and j with zero. You're going to start with one or you can print i plus one because I'm going to print the row value. So if you're starting the row loop variable from zero, then you have to add one before printing the value of row. Okay. If you're starting with the number one, i equal to one, then you're simply going to print one, i only, right? So let us see how you're going to solve. So can you figure out the pattern that I just told you? Okay, so row one, one, row two, two. So pattern is repeating. So this is the logic that you are going to apply. So in the first row, I'm going to initialize my row one since I'm starting my number from one. So here I need to initialize my i with one. If you're writing i is equal to zero, right? If you're writing i as zero, then over here, while you are printing the value of i, you'll be printing i plus one. Okay, only if you are writing i as zero, right? But I'm not writing i as zero, so I will be writing only i, okay? Okay. Then after initializing the row, I want to print the column value. So j equal to one, j less than i, j plus plus. And then I'm going to print the value i, which is one. Right, then J will be incremented. J will become two condition false. Then your control will again move to the main outer loop. So now let's run our code. So here we are in the main function. In the main function, we are going to declare the variables. Then I'm going to ask a user to enter the number of rows. Then using the scanner function, I'm going to input the value for the number of rows. Then after this, I'm going to apply the outer for loop for the row. So here I'm starting from i equals to one, sorry. i less than equal to n, i plus plus. Then start your inner loop, j equals to one, j less than equals to i, j plus plus, right? Then printf percent d comma i, where value of i is one. Then after this, I'm going to add the next line for it, right? And in the end, write the return zero statement. Now let's run the program. So number of rows, five, and here we got the output. So let us repeat it again. So here, this is my i and j are the loop variables. In n, I'm going to store my number of rows. Then after inserting the number of rows, I have applied my outer loop to initialize my row. Then for each row, I'm going to fill up some value in the columns. So 
condition is j equals to one, j less than equals to i. In the previous slide, it was mentioned less than i, so it was by mistake. So please correct it. It will be j less than equals to i. Okay, because j equals to one, one less than equal to one, condition true. If it is one less than one, condition will be false, right? Okay, so condition true, i which is one, so one will be printed, right? Then j becomes two. 2 less than equal to 1 condition false so it will come out from the inner loop and then your i variable will be incremented now i will become 2 so this is for i equals to 1 then your i will become become 2 2 less than equals to 5 true now again come inside the inner loop again j will be initialized with 1 so it will run for two times because j is 1 One for value one, another for value two. So two will be printed two times. Similarly, three will be printed three times, four four times, and five will be printed five times. So this is how you are going to solve this problem. Next. Now, coming toward the next pattern, which is the last pattern, and that is alphabet or letter pattern. so problems will be same that we have done using the star and the number pattern but only little bit extra logic you need to apply because here we are not printing numbers we are printing alphabets so let us start okay so the pattern in this problem that we have is the first row in the first row i need to print letter a in the second row i need to print letter b how many times two times c three times d four times and e five times so after printing it for five times then we are going to stop this loop right okay so now again can you figure out how to solve this pattern we have already solved this type of problems twice before right one with the number pattern and one with the star pattern okay so again condition for the inner loop will be i less than equals to j right so j will j loop will run for the number of i times number of row times right but here instead of printing numbers 1 2 2 3 3 3 we are printing alphabets so can you think about what extra logic i need to apply over here so the logic you are going to use is i know that the sky value of letter a is 65 this is how your letters are converted into the numbers by the machines machines can also read the letters na no? but how they they can read it obviously you need to convert the letters into the numbers then these decimal numbers will be converted into the binary numbers right so the sky value of letter a is 65 then for b just add 1 66 for c add again 1 in b value 67 then 68 69 and so on so the numbering will continue okay so i'm going to take a counter variable and i'm going to initialize it with the value 65 and then now in the first row i am going to print the value for corrector for value 65 right but only in the first row then i need value 66 in the second row two times right so it will be according to the condition but how i am going to print 66 you need to increment the counter after every row not in the column because in column the value is same for each row the value is getting incremented in the next row only so let us run our code to check its execution so firstly we are going to declare our variables then you are going to ask user to input the number of rows then using the scan of statement i am going to input the number of rows then after this we are going to apply our outer for loop to initialize my row 
right? And how many rows I want to enter? N. Then in each row, my number of columns will be equivalent to the my row number. So condition will be J less than equals to I, right? And the value for each column will be character. So for character, we want to use person C, right? And I'm going to take a counter variable and initialize with value 65. And here in the printf, I'm going to print the counter only. Then after my inner loop, I'm going to print the next row in the next line. Plus I want to raise the value of my count. Now let's run the program. So enter the number of rows, so number of rows five, and here is the output. Right, so let us revise this concept once again. So here, n is my number of rows. i and j, these are my loop variables. Then I have the count and this count I have taken to print my characters or the letters. Then using the scanf command, I'm inputting the value for the number of rows where this and is what this is your address of operator. Right. So whatever value you're going to input, for example, here I entered the value five. So this five value will be stored at the memory address of the variable n. This is what it means. And percent is a format specifier, which represents integer type of input. Then we have started your outer loop. Okay, so outer loop starting from i equals to one until i less than equal to n i plus plus. So when i is one, one less than equals to five condition true. So it will enter my inner loop. Now for each row in my first row, j is one. One less than equal to i, i is one. One less than equal to one, true. It says printf person c comma count. So count is 65. So if 65 is converted into character, its answer will be character A. So I get the value A. Then J will be incremented. J will become J plus plus. J becomes two. Two less than equal to one condition false. It will go again back to the outer loop. And here, then your I will become two. Again, this process will be repeated for I equals to two. But here, your counter value you are incrementing. Count is 66. So what value will be printed? B, because the character value for 66 is sky value is B. I hope that this problem is well clear now. So that's it for your problems, which is pattern based problem. Now time for some test. So now here I'm going to share some assessment problems with solutions. You can just pause the video with every problem and then you can try to understand that how the problem is solved. So this is your first problem in which instead of printing A, B, B, C, 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 D, 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 and so on, I'm printing the continuous letters A, B, C, D until my all rows gets filled. So again, the pattern will be same, but you need to do a little bit of change in the logic. So pause this video and find out the logic how you're going to solve it. Moving forward, to the next, next question. So in this problem, you have to print a pyramid, right? So in this case, you are going to print white spaces, including stars. So how you're going to approach this problem is, again, as I told you earlier, convert your pattern-based problem into the matrix problem. So draw lines. So these are my rows. So how many rows do I have? Five. Now let's see how many columns do I have. So this is in column one, I'm having one star, right? Then in column, this is my two. 
so there will be total nine columns if you figure it out right so first in the inner loop though there will be two inner loops first you need to apply the logic to print the space so 1 2 3 4 so here i need to print four spaces so this is my column 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 9 columns are there so here the star is at fifth place then 1 2 3 spaces then three stars so what is coming after this you don't we need to worry about you don't need to fill up this one you only need to fill up this pattern which is your white space plus this triangle right and for this triangle this is the logic pause this video and try to find out thank you for this for listening to this lecture have a great day